I saw just earlier this week that Edmund had a, had a housing study and they were 9,000 units short of what they need. And that's just Edmund. In Oklahoma City, it's probably five times that. Tonight, we are digging into housing concerns facing Oklahoma communities and how they can impact the homelessness. We're looking at what the issues are and potential solutions to fix them. Fox 25's Tom Ferguson spoke with the Homeless Alliance about the problems that they're seeing and with a local lawmaker about the legislation he's working on to help. Adam and Wendy, a report from Price Edwards and Co. says rent increases in Oklahoma historically rose about 2-3% to a year. But in 2021, that spiked to 12%. It fell to 6% last year, but the firm says that's still historically high. What's unclear, according to them, is where things go from here. It's not just that we need more low-income housing. We need more of all kinds of housing. That was Dan Strawn with the Homeless Alliance. He says Oklahoma City needs 50,000 more housing units. That will allow more flexibility for those who can afford it to move into more expensive ones while freeing up the cheaper ones. We all learned at our mother's knee that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And boy, that is really true about homelessness. He's highlighting a major increase in those who need help with housing. According to him, about 11,000 people in OKC interacted with the homelessness system in 2012. In 2022, that number was about 20,000. During that time, the number of those actually in shelters or on the streets stayed at about 13 to 1400. Fewer housing options aren't the only issue leading to homelessness. One lawmaker is trying to help keep out-of-state investors from jacking up rent prices by buying up available properties. A perfect example would be when uh, foreign countries were coming to Oklahoma and buying up large parts of rural Oklahoma. They were driving the market value of that land up to where Oklahoma farmers and ranchers couldn't afford to expand their own operations. Oklahoma City Democrat Mickey Dollins is previewing efforts he'll be pursuing when lawmakers get back together next year. He says he's looking at what the state did with a stop to foreign buyers snapping up farmland and applying that to corporations purchasing large swaths of properties to rent out. It's imposing a tax on out-of-state investors who want to buy a house uh, for the purpose of renting and then using that collected money in a, um, in a bond or an endowment to help people with a down payment assistance. According to the National Association of Realtors, Oklahoma was tied as third in the nation for having the most corporate home buyers at a rate of 18% in 2021. To help drive down housing costs, Dollins is also urging municipalities to change zoning to allow for higher density construction and to let homeowners have secondary rental properties on their own lots. Another issue the Homeless Alliance is stressing is that fewer landlords are accepting tenants with housing choice vouchers. He says he's never seen so many being turned away in the 19 years he's been with the Alliance. I'm Tom Ferguson reporting. Now back to you. In 2021, the city of Oklahoma City published an affordable housing study. It found that at that time, the city had sufficient, affordable, and adequate housing available for people who made at or above the city's median income. But it was a different story for the 44% of people who didn't have that level of income. The study found for those residents, affordable housing was becoming increasingly hard to find. It also noted many of the units that were affordable were poorly maintained and could even pose a health or safety risk. The study also stated that over the last decade, housing costs in Oklahoma City had risen at a faster rate than wages, which created an affordability gap. And joining us now to talk about the housing situation in Oklahoma City right now is City Councilor from Ward 2, James Cooper. We appreciate the time tonight, and, and we've got to ask you right out of the gate here. You were a part of the housing study in 2021. Those findings showed house prices rising faster than wages in Oklahoma City. From your perspective, is the city in a better or worse place now than it was then? Uh, I think we're kind of in a worse place. I think the good news is we've done the affordable housing study, uh, the, which we had not done. The bad news is we're in a bit of a housing crisis. And unfortunately, for a long time, many of us who've called Oklahoma City home, part of the narrative we tell ourselves and people is that low cost of living is a defining factor of life in Oklahoma. Well, unfortunately, as you noted, rents are rising and 
kind of worse than just the rent is access to home ownership. That affordable housing study revealed, as you saw, we have uh, around 19,000 Oklahoma Cityans currently in need of one to two bedroom housing, 19,400. We only have about 3,600 of those units available. And so you're talking about nurses, teachers, uh, baristas, your working middle class, your middle class, and we just don't have that housing stock for them right now. So that's a problem. What are some of the solutions in your tool belt or the tools in your tool belt to even solve that problem now that we have all this information and we know what the issue is? What are some of the ways you can go about solving it? Yeah, so that's actually the good news. Uh, and I don't want people to reside in despair because the good news is they've already set in motion some of the solutions when voters approved MAPS 4 in 2019. As you recall, we set aside over $50 million to build uh, housing in MAPS 4. Some of it uh, would be for people who are experiencing homelessness to be able to pair them with case managers so they have a support system. It's called permanent supportive housing where they have a support system who helps them from slip sliding back into that cycle of poverty, right? Connecting them to mental health care, addiction services, whatever it might need to stabilize them. So that's one thing we've already done. And then building, replenishing our public housing stock, which we've not touched since, quite frankly, World War II in a lot of instances. So that's some good news. The better news is that we pass an infrastructure bond every 10 years on the sevens, as you know. Unfortunately, Oklahoma, is the only state in the union that uh, prohibits us using property tax for uh, city services. But every 10 years, we're able to tap into that property tax to resurface roads, build sidewalks. In the 2017 bond, we set aside $10 million for workforce affordable housing. Well, the next bond is right around the corner. We're actually ahead of 2027 when the next one would be. We're looking at an election in 2025. We have a $1.2 billion housing need, and I wanna make sure everyone understands that, a $1.2 billion housing need. That's what that affordable housing study taught us. So we can set a money in the upcoming bond for voters uh, for their consideration. And I'd like to see everything from more permanent supportive housing to uh, workforce uh, affordable housing. Uh, in other words, setting aside incentives to incentivize developers to build that one to two bedroom um, sort of housing that earlier. Another thing that, you know, it's gonna be hard for some of us to dispel a myth in our head, not just that the cost of living isn't as low as it used to be, but once upon a time, people bought a home as a starter home to then buy the bigger home. That's not what a lot of us in Gen Z and the millennials and even some Gen X are after. We want one to two bedrooms uh, quite frankly, that might last us for the uh, rest of our lives. Some of us aren't even having kids. And I got to ask you, we are running a little shorter on time, but I do have to ask you, has there been any conversations because we've seen in California, even overseas, there's been a lot of talk about rezoning and some of the zoning laws that happens there. Is that anything that's come into discussion here in Oklahoma City to maybe create some availability or create some more real estate where they can make that development happen? Sure. Currently, we are in the middle of a zoning update that's going to be part of uh, the solution as well. Because right now, the historic Paseo neighborhood, the sort of stock that area, duplexes, fourplexes, eightplexes next to cottage homes, bungalows, that is where we need to be heading. Uh, and some of our current like a neighborhood like the Paseo impossible today. We also need to be prepared to build uh, that sort of housing uh, next to transit lines, like the upcoming bus rapid transit that you see on my shirt here. That's critical because transportation costs actually make it harder to own homes and adds to rent as well. So zoning is key, but also I would everyone to start looking up housing trusts, community housing trust. We're gonna have to start setting aside incentives to encourage developers to do the sort of infill development that we know our people need. And it's gonna have to be mixed use, mixed income where ground level is retail and we build up uh, instead of sprawling out the way the city has done for too long. War two Councilman James Cooper, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you all so much for uh, your interest. There is an investment opportunity many are now building much of their income on. Fox 25's Peyton May spoke with realtors who are opening doors to all kinds of housing options.
Many of us have gone on VRBO or Airbnb to try and find the perfect place to stay on vacation or even a few months for work. Now we're shaping the market that's changing the housing industry and neighborhoods as well. Short term rentals typically qualify as any rental under a year and they've become more and more popular. Realtors in OKC say the temporary housing market is filling a gap for travelers. We really do not have enough hotel doors for the city of our size. So short term rentals made sense to me because they added another place to stay. Kimberly Robbins is a realtor that manages short term properties like this one. She says majority of the owners are home in OKC for a part of the year and rent their spaces out for the rest. They renovate the property and have it at five star ready to sell ready to live in in that state all the time so they can transition in or out if they need to. In our city, Robin says guests are typically coming for conferences, family visits, or even here shooting a movie. It's not the typical party house guests that short term rentals sometimes get a bad rap for. I know there's a lot of pushback in our communities for short term rental because you think of that one nighter, but that is about 10% of our market. It's an investment property for an owner, but it could be the first steps in an investment for a guest as well. Sell your house move into a short term rental, put your stuff in storage. This house is fully furnished. It has everything you need. And then you and your realtor can do a great search and take your time finding your forever home. Robbins tells me she has tons of guests who stay in a short term rental and then end up wanting to move to Oklahoma City because they were able to see the area in terms of a neighborhood feel instead of inside a hotel room. Reporting Peyton May, Fox 25 News. Many cities need to build millions of new homes to keep help solving the affordability crisis. But in much of the country, zoning laws make it illegal to build anything other than a single unit home in many neighborhoods. According to Business Insider, New Zealand stands out as an exceptional example of how to successfully boost housing supply through zoning reform. In 2016, New Zealand passed a law to allow for gentle density, making it legal to build duplexes and townhomes on single homes lots. The policy reportedly tripled the area's housing capacity and slowed the pace of rising housing costs. And while New Zealand shows it can be a success, zoning and apartments can cause some controversy. A new study in Edmond showed 75% of people who work in Edmond can't afford to live there. And while it raised concerns about the city potentially missing out on economic opportunities at this week's meeting, some homeowners argued that the city should not get involved with the housing market. I'm not the only one that has a lot of concerns about those investments. Our stock in this place uh, being protected. We worked hard all of our life to get to where we are and where we live. And we take a lot of pride in where we live. A few city council members said they were embarrassed by those statements and think everyone should have a fair shot to live in Edmond. And that was your big story breakdown. You can find more about affordable housing and the proposed solutions on OKCFox.com. And if you missed any of this big story breakdown, you can find it all on our YouTube channel. Just scan the QR code on your screen or search OKC Fox.